Thank you. So we're not now going to uh, start with our first lightning talks of the day. And this session is uh, a session that's focused on the theme of intelligence inspired by humans. And first up, we have Michael Frank, who is a professor in our psychology department. And he's the David and Lucille Packard Foundation Professor of Human Biology. So Michael. Thanks very much. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my work on children's early language learning and why I think this can be an inspiration for social AI. Language learning is one of the key puzzles of cognitive science, linguistics, and psychology. How do speechless, wordless infants so quickly become toddlers who can understand language and use language to make their way through the world? This process happens incredibly quickly. Here's my daughter, Madeline, at 18 months. At that point, the longest thing she had said was happy bee, which I think meant happy birthday. At 19 months, she combined words for the first time and said blue ball. At 20 months, 23 months, she observed that Spike doggy no food, eat dirt. She was talking about my mother-in-law's dog, Spike, and it's true. He doesn't eat food, he eats dirt. At 26 months, she was a teenager already. She said, Dada, move on body. Might need a little bit more space. <laughs> so you can see her here at 26 months. She's about two pounds heavier, her hair's a little bit longer, and she's got more dirt on her face. But these physical transformations pale in comparison to the expressive transformation that she's gone through. She's able to use language in a productive way, saying things that I never said to her to get her way. This input to uptake relationship has been studied in the cognitive sciences for many years. And in this history, models from artificial intelligence and machine learning have been a tremendous inspiration, helping us understand the relationship between language input and language output and generalization. This architecture here is a transformer network. Uh, it's been responsible for some recent state-of-the-art results in language modeling, producing incredibly interesting generalizations from language input. But I'd like to highlight one difference between this transformer and children. This figure shows differences in language input to different kinds of models. Each dot shows one million words of training input to a model. The red dots show what's received by an average two-year-old, 10 million words. In contrast, recent state-of-the-art language models receive more than 10 billion words of input. In other words, it takes a 1,000 times less data for a two-year-old to learn to speak than for a language model. Why is this? And how can we use less data to train our own models? What I want to argue for you today is that the social context of language learning allows children to do more with less data. How does this happen? First, children let others help them solve puzzles, receiving supervision, in the computer science sense, from the adults around them. Adults point out when something is ambiguous, help clarify the input for children in ways that allow them to learn. In my lab, we study the social ecology of these parent-child conversations, using sensors like cameras on the children's and parents' heads to get a good sense of what social information is available to the kids. But beyond just using that information, Adults and children, when they hear language, they think about what others are thinking, and they use that to make sense of the language they hear. For the past 10 years, my colleague Noah Goodman and I have been studying this kind of pragmatic understanding of language in context. We show people displays like this one, and we say, my friend has glasses. Many people share the intuition that my friend is the face with glasses but not a hat, going beyond the literal meaning of the word to infer the intention in context. We've constructed models of this process of recursive reasoning that describe the way that we can refine the initial meaning of a linguistic utterance to figure out what it actually means in a particular context. Critically, our experiments have shown that children can actually use this kind of information to learn the meaning of a novel word. So when we show three and four year olds these two dinosaurs and point to this one and say this is a dinosaur with a gazer, children correctly infer that the gazer is the bandana the novel, more informative, more interesting, more pragmatically relevant feature of the dinosaur. The last thing that children know how to do, much better 
than artificial agents is to ask for help when they need it. When we show a child an object they've never seen before and we say, give me the DAX, they correctly infer what it is and give it to the experimenter. But when we show them two objects and we say the same kind of thing, give me the FEP, they look around, huh? And they look to the experimenter, seeking social gaze for help. In all of these ways and more, social reasoning ch skills allow children to do more with less data. And I believe by studying children and understanding this process, we can create AI that is more efficient with data and uses its social context more appropriately to learn to communicate. Thank you. <laughs>